Good evening and welcome to the Municipality of Monroeville's Citizens Night and Agenda Setting Meeting for July 8th, 2021. It is approximately uh, 7, 10 p.m. If we could all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call this evening. Mayor Greeslock. Here. Mrs. Gatos. Here. Mr. Price. Here. Mr. Harvey. Here. Mr. Wolfram. Here. Mr. Arasenko. Here. Mr. Williams. Here. Mr. Wilson. Mr. Little. Here. Mr. Ratcher. Here. Ms. Rock. Here. Mr. Hugis. Here. Mr. Sedlak. Here. Mr. Weldon. Here. Welcome, everyone. So uh, we haven't done this in a while uh, due to the pandemic. We have. Uh, we did a few different things for meetings. We did Zoom meetings, and, uh, and then we ended up doing just a one meeting, a combined meeting for our Citizens Night and our agenda setting meeting and our regular council meeting. So this is the first time in a while we're actually gonna have two meetings. So tonight is our Citizens Night, and it's our agenda setting meeting. As a reminder to everybody, this is not a voting meeting. This is just a discussion work session meeting. Anything that we discuss or choose to vote on for, uh, for this month will be done on Tuesday the 13th, next, this, coming, this coming Tuesday. As always, our meetings are on the second Tuesday of the month. Those are the regular council meetings, the second Tuesday of the month. And then the work session is the Thursday prior to that. That's how we figure that out. But this is the first time we've been doing this in a while, so we may all be a little rusty up here. But uh, at any rate, what I'm gonna do is open up the floor for public comment on any municipal item, if there's anyone here that would like to comment. Now would be your time. Hello, my name is Donna Schubert. I live on Edgemead Drive. Very good, Donna. Have you signed in, please? I did. Great. When I came in. The floor is yours. My problem and concern is the stop sign at the bottom of Logan's Ferry and Edgemead. It is a disaster. I walk that way every day with my dog or myself. Cars fly down that hill and do not stop at that stop sign, including the police officers that I have seen. Whether they're going to something or not, nobody stops. Very few people stop, let's put it that way. My thing is, is there is a warning up by Pauline that a stop sign is ahead. But if anybody's familiar with the area, you come down and you go down and around kind of into the hill. The trees are so overgrown there that if you don't know that it's there because it was way back that it told you it was, you come around that bend, you can't even see the stop sign. It's all hidden behind all this brush of these trees. Who these trees belong to, I have no idea. But somebody is going to get hurt there severely. It happens all the time. I'm a resident there for 32 years. I go at Lee side because you can at least see where you're going. You can't, these cars just fly and don't okay. care. Well, what we'll do is we'll send public works down there um, we'll look at the, the visibility situation. Okay. And uh, if there's things that we can trim back that we're able to. Uh, property lines are vertical, so we can typically cut things back, and there okay. are certainly right-of-way areas that we can, you know, trim things back. So we'll check and see the visibility. We can trim back where we can, and we can also follow up with the police department as well on this matter. Okay. And also see if there's anything we can do with the signage change, if the warning is that's in the right spot if we need to move it right. if we need to do something different is there so. a way of putting another warning part way down because where it turns is where it should We'd have be to follow like fall right. out and hit you in the face you know it's there or one of those flashing red lights that is at a stop sign you can barely see the white lines the white line that is for the stop sign mm -hmm. you, you just can't see it not that that's going to slow people not so much slow people right. stop but can improve it sign damage is it leaning then uh, might no. be. No, no I okay. don't think so. Okay. It I was. Just, after she called me, I went down and looked. So I have a request of counsel and Paul. Okay. Uh, a, another stop sign ahead sign past Pauline. Trim back the foliage and add the blinking red light to the stop of the stop sign. It might just <laughs> pop it out. You know, I'm just, so for I my that residents would, that I, live there and anybody else. Visibility is a big thing. That It, it is terrible. The foliage right. is way grown over. By the time you round the bend and notice there's a stop sign, 
you don't know. Uh, yeah. You're halfway now, through. I would suspect that most of the traffic going that way knows doggone well there's a stop sign. Of course they do. So Probably. <laughs> and they do but, a tap and go. But Not right, even a tap and But go. right now they have an excuse. Uh -huh. Right now they have an excuse of saying I didn't see it. Right. Okay. So if we trim the foliage back, put the blinking red light on it, add the sign, yes. uh, then enforcement can start without an excuse. Hopefully it'll be a little safer. Yeah, and we can look at the size of the stop sign too. Sometimes they, they can be larger depending <laughs> <laughs> within yeah. reason. But yeah, I would like to, but that's an easy one. to take a look at it and then give us yeah. a recommendation as to what can we do this stop do. The, the flashing red. Yes, I got it. I got my notes. Yeah, we're good. Got the notes. Taking got care the of. Notes. Yeah, usually the flashing red will usually. I mean, may not I mean a permanent placement, but we a lot of times we'll put on as a temporary placement. Right. Um, you know, just to raise start to raise awareness it's to it. It's just yeah to try to help it out because if you come out that way Understood. and a car flies down, you're t-boned, you're done. Well, the yeah. thing about it is, is if we do the things that we just mentioned, and then we do enforcement, there's no excuses as to why the person didn't stop. Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Very good. And then one on top of that, real right. quick, um, same location. Edgemead is here, Logan's Ferry is here. This property where the sign says road may flood is an eyesore. It, the grass is over three foot high. There is a dead tree that has been there forever. Don't, again, don't know whose property it is. The guy that lives on the corner has a fence there but doesn't take care of any of this. One gentleman that lives in our neighborhood does go down and do the entrance on Lee side and he is so sweet he cuts it actually i even think he goes down and cuts that retention pond it because that never gets it's done it's either it's it's yeah you're talking about on the other side of logan's ferry just no it, yeah here's, the, here's logan's ferry here's the stop sign here's edgemead right it, it's there it's right here it's right, it's right, right there right well right saying that's the, an easy thing we can we can figure out who's responsible and, okay and if, if we are responsible be, we can take care of it or if somebody else great. is we can enforce that that would be great no, thanks for bringing it to our attention thank you very much for your time thanks donna is there anyone else who would like to address council this evening? Council. Serve you to sign in, unless you already have. I did. Great. Can you yes. state your name for the record, please? Good evening. My name is Len Young. <clears throat> I live in Monroeville Welcome. for a long time. And uh, a couple of things I wanted to make note about. Over the last uh, maybe dozen years or so, the Recreation and, uh, and Parks Department has been putting out a brochure that we used to get in the mail three or four times a year describing all the different programs that they had and uh, I know I always look forward to it myself. Uh, for myself I volunteer twice a year to teach a little landscaping course once in the spring how to get ready for the growing season and then once in the fall how to prepare for the, for the non-growing season dormant season as we call it. Uh, last spring didn't get one. The course that I was signed up to do in April was, po was canceled, we had one person sign up. Just not worth it, although I offered to meet with that one person, but Joanne said no. Um, upon further discovery, the pamphlet or the brochure that goes out cost the municipality about $7,000 per issue to go out. And I was just thinking, gee, our budget's what, about $37 million? $7,000 might be like a, a rounding error, perhaps. Uh, if you look through the budget, the different departments, there's a line on almost every department that says telephone and telegraph. Some of these departments, I don't know if they're still using the Morse code telegraph or whatever, but you add that all up, there's a lot of money in there. Maybe find $7,000 there. Point being, uh, I, I sincerely request that if there's any way to reinstitute the paper copy of the programs that the Recreation and Parks Department puts out, uh, maybe reinstate that paper copy. I know it's on the website. Uh, some people go to the website, some don't, but it's just it was just a real nice way of advertising the things. And I'm sure a lot of the other events, the aquatic events, uh, especially in the summertime, all kind of events going on, was a great way to advertise them. I'm sure that the attendance is way down on a lot of those things. Of course, we had the China virus issue last year, so everything was down, but now things are getting back to normal. I think that if we had the uh, paper copy coming out, get a lot more people signed up for these we, things. We Thanks for the suggestion. Sure. The Senior Center also does theirs online, and they do very well with um, 
everyone, and that's part of the, what we came up with as to why mm -hmm. to move it to online. Yeah. Just to save some money as we are, you know, um, watching every penny that we sure. spend. And things are getting tighter, and your taxes have not been raised. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there is the availability of the Park and Rec Department office here. Um, this was a long discussion that we had for a couple of years and came to the conclusion it was the best route to go to hmm. move us technology sure. forward. I understand. So um, I don't see it coming back in paper form. And there are hard, hard copies that are available here, here and, and at the library. The and at the, and the, the library. Mm -hmm. and I understand what you're saying. It's not coming to your house. I, we understand the suggestion. Yeah. But it's just nice. Thank uh, you, but it's probably, you know, we're kind of following suit with the library and the senior center. On that. Yeah, I guess I'm sort of old-fashioned on that kind of stuff. I just turned 64 last month, so. You look good. What the heck? Young Thank man. you. I feel good too. Yes, yeah, um, One other thing I wanted to stress, as I always do, the American Legion Gold Star Post A20 right here in Monroeville, uh, Paradise at the bottom of Duff Road, offers their Saturday night bingo, 7 p.m. They start, open to the public. You don't have to be a member of the Legion to go there, but uh, it's a lot of fun. A dollar a, a card. For the first part, and then they do the, the uh, coverall. That's two dollars, but boy, ten fifteen dollars, you can have a fun night. Uh, Eighteen and up, American Legion. Pardon Eight, me. Eighteen and up or twenty one. Yeah, yeah, they got the bar. It's in the the bar and that. So yeah, be twenty one and over. Twenty one over. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, but uh, it's a great time. Saturday night. What else are you gonna do? Watch reruns of Laugh In or something. I don't know. <laughs> um, Seven p.m. down at the American Legion, bottom of Duff Road on Old William Penn Highway. Great. Okay. Thanks, Len. Thank you. You're welcome. Good night. Is there anyone else that would like to address council on any municipal item during Citizens' Night? Seeing that we're going to close that part of the meeting, we're going to move over to our agenda setting meeting. And we're going to start. We have a public hearing item. It's our Comcast cable franchise renewal for the municipality of Monroeville. Uh, Mr. Little, I believe you're handling all this? Yes, yes. So uh, if there's. Um, Anyone, this is a public hearing item. If there's anyone in the audience that was going to add testimony to this public hearing, um, now is your time to let me know. If after hearing what Mr. Little says and uh, you change your mind, we can swear you in and add testimony to the public hearing item. So, Mr. Little, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Uh, as most people know in the community, we have uh, two providers for cable, Verizon and Comcast, in our agreement, what's called a franchise agreement. Uh, to permit them to use our right-of-ways to run their cables, which um, <coughs> we, we receive a fee, as most other municipalities in the Commonwealth do. Uh, we have to have a public hearing under the Federal Cable Act uh, in order to move ahead with our um, uh, agreement uh, with the Cohen Law Group, who is uh, handling it. And I have a, uh, a statement here, and anybody can offer any comments on... Uh, Comcast's performance, and you can offer uh, any comments at any time, really, but this is a public hearing, and any comments that are given uh, will be uh, uh, given to the Cohen Law Group and will be put into uh, the record. So good evening. This is a public hearing of the Municipal Council regarding cable franchise renewal for the Municipality of Monroeville. This public hearing is held pursuant to Section 626 of the Federal Cable Act, which sets forth the process for franchise renewal. The municipality's current franchise with Comcast will expire soon, and the municipality is beginning the process re of renewing the franchise. The public hearing is part of a preliminary portion of a franchise renewal in which a municipality reviews the cable operator's past performance and identifies the municipality's future cable-related community needs. As such, as part of this public hearing, we invite comments from any citizen who wish to speak regarding either or both the aforementioned subjects. Franchise renewal is the best opportunity for municipalities to assert their rights with respect to their cable operator and to obtain important benefits in, re in return for granting the cable operator the right to, to use their public rights of ways. The benefits include a state-of-the-art state of the art cable system now and in the future. Number two, strong customer service standards. Three, detailed reporting requirements from the cable operator. Four, maximize franchise fees. Five, public educational government, which is called a peg channel, if desired, which we do. We're one of the few communities that do have that. Number six, pay capital support funding where applicable. Number seven, legal protections of the right-of-way. And lastly, eight, better mechanisms to enforce 
the franchise agreement. These are just some of the potential benefits available through the franchise renewal. Citizens may address these items or any other cable related item that are important to them. We now open the hearing to citizens' comment. So if anybody has any comment, please step up to the podium and we will swear you in. Seeing none. Any uh, questions from council? Yep. None. Anything else, Mr. Little? That is all. Very good. Thank you. Council, we're moving over to our agenda setting meeting. I have an executive session announcement that council conducted an executive session before tonight's Citizens Night on Thursday, July 8th. Mr. Mayor, may I interrupt? Since that was actually the public, that we have to close the public hearing? You can, you can make a note that it's closed. I don't believe you ever opened it other than to say that there was a, there I was thought a that Mr. Hearing. Little said it is open and open to the public. Well, I, you didn't do it by motion. So, okay. so I would say that as long right. as it's noted in the record that- I, I, Sorry to interrupt. No, please, I, but- We've concluded the public hearing. I think we're good. Should we go through a motion to open it and close I, it? I don't think it's necessary. All right. We all had it and it's documented and it's in the minutes. Great. Yep. Mm -hmm. Very good. Sorry, Mayor. No, thank you for pointing it out. Uh, moving over to our executive session. that We did have a council, council had an executive session tonight before our Citizens Night on Thursday, July 8th, 2021 from 6.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. for personnel and litigation reasons. Council's legislative action, if any, shall be taken at the Tuesday, July 13th council meeting. Council, we are uh, moving over to the minutes. Uh, you have minutes from the Citizens Night meeting of June 8th and the regular council meeting of June 8th. Any uh, questions or comments about those minutes? Nope, no, sir. Very good. You also have a report of your uh, tax collections. Does anyone have any questions this evening about those? Payroll report, any questions or comments, anyone? Seeing none, moving over. And we have our list of bills and budget transfers. Does anyone have any questions or comments this evening about the list of bills or budget transfers? No, sir. Very no. good. Now we are moving over to our consent agenda. We have new business, 21-2-SUB, uh, -dash -dash Strom Communal Subdivision. Mr. Little, please. Yeah, the applicant is requesting preliminary and final subdivision approval to, to adjust the rear lot lines of tax parcels 980J211 and 980J274. The properties are located at 102 Monticello Drive and 2190 Ramsey Road in the R21 Family Residential Zoning District. Planning Commission has recommends approval. Any issues? No, it's, it's very simple. The, the one party wants to buy a little strip of property from the other party. They're both in agreement. Uh, it's a very simple subdivision. That's it. That's it. That's it. Very good. Any other questions, Council? Mm -hmm. Very good. We will uh, address that on Tuesday. Next item, Mr. Little. Okay, next item is uh, Summit Smith Development VA Clinic at Monroeville Mall. Applicant is requesting site plan approval to construct a two-story, 70,000 square foot medical outpatient facility and associated site amenities. The project area is approximately 6.5 acres and located within, within the overall Mon Monroeville Mall property tax parcel 639F75 in the C2 Business Commercial District. Planning Commission recommends approval. And it, item three, I'm sorry, item three is also of the same. I was going to say, why don't you read We can that combine one? them both together. Yeah, yeah, why don't you go ahead and. Yeah, the applicant <laughs> is requesting preliminary and final subdivision approval to subdivide 6.615 acres of property out of, out of the overall 157.437 acres of the Monroeville Mall property, tax parcel 639F75. The property is located in C2, Business Commercial District, and Planning Commission has recommended approval to that also. Sir, if you could uh, introduce yourself, please. Sure. Yeah, good evening. I'm Sean Roberts with Summit Smith Development. Hey, Sean. Hi. Welcome. So if you want to just go ahead with your uh, sure. project. Yeah, um, I, I do have some slides. I don't know if it's easier to, yeah, there we go. So happy to be here tonight talking about our proposed new VA outpatient clinic on the Monroeville Mall campus. It's just over 70,000 square feet, includes 500 parking spaces. We are going through the subdivision to purchase the 6.6 .6 acres that's currently the Macy's parking lot, a large chunk of the Macy's parking lot. We work closely with the mall owner CBL on that subdivision. Uh, this was part of a multi-year lease, uh, competitive lease procurement process through the General Services Administration. 
It is a private facility. The, the VA will be the tenant, so it is fully taxable. Uh, it'll, be, it'll be a privately owned building, and the VA has a long-term 20-year 20, 20 lease. Uh, we, we hope to make it through our entitlements and design with the VA as well and begin construction this fall. Um, with that on schedule, they could take occupancy late 2023, and then they have to ramp up and start seeing patients hopefully in 2023. Uh, it will expand veteran access uh, as part of the hub and spoke model. So right now, most of the vets uh, east of Pittsburgh have to go all the way to the Oakland campus. So this is part of a concerted effort to yeah, bring <laughs> outpatient <laughs> services out um, where it's easier for vets, closer to amenities. Uh, this is a primary care clinic. It's, it's, things, it's mostly primary care, but it has a small radiology department and physical therapy and lab for draws, things like that. Um, just, I'm sure you're familiar with the site, but the 6.6 .6 acres that we're taking is, is the far you know, plan. It's the east side of the campus, but it's plan west here when I'm showing. Um, this would be our civil design. Uh, our main entrance will be facing the Macy's entrance, and the building uh, is circled by Mall Circle Drive. We aren't impacting Mall Circle Drive at all. The subdivision doesn't impact that, and we're keeping the, the same wing roads that are on the sides of our uh, proposed parcel and then creating a new throughway that then would segregate our parcel from um, some remaining Macy's parking. Sorry, I have to ask questions as sure. we go. I'm sure. Gonna, did, how long do you think this project will take to complete it? Boring everything going through. Yeah, uh, we hope to be done with construction. Uh, the earliest we'd be done is the end of 2023. Uh, I'm sorry, the end of 2022. <laughs> I may have misstated that earlier. They would take, yeah. So we hope to break ground this fall, and it's about 14 months construction time. Did you purchase the project, uh, the property, or are you leasing the property? We're going to, part of the, uh, the second item tonight is a subdivision. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so we'll be, we'll be buying 6.6 .6 acres roughly from the mall. Uh, subdividing it and then building the facility and the VA will be the tenant. So the yeah, VA... An, answer me this. Uh, you say the main entrance is going to face Macy's, mm -hmm. then then the back would face Mall Drive? Yeah. The, the can can you design that so it would be more pleasing to go mm -hmm. past with windows, doors, or, sure. or fake entrance or whatever so, so you don't go by there and look like you're looking at the back of a building? Yeah, absolutely, and I actually have some images, but okay. most of the, uh, the back of house spaces for the staff, including you know, the staff lounges, the conference rooms, the private offices, those mm -hmm. will be on Mall Drive, so that's mostly glass okay. on Mall Drive. Mall so we're all jumping ahead. Yeah, okay. no, yes. no problem. <laughs> Keep them coming. Wait, if I can you did say it was a 20-year lease as well. It's a 20-year yes. initial lease, and typically they stay longer. They have the option to extend. So historically, with a facility this size, they'll, they'll be there a long time. But they have a 20-year firm lease that they have to be there. Thank you. Yeah, we move on to the presentation, and then we'll hold our questions to the sure. end. Okay. No. So this, this is an image looking from Macy's towards, you know, looking east towards the front of the building. Uh, we have a pop-up clear story and then a drive under canopy for drop-off. This is um, an angle kind of looking southeast. This is another angle looking at another side. And there you can see the back of the building where we have uh, glass for both the offices and uh, some of the, the conference rooms and staff. We're going to have a small staff patio in the back, too, for them to have lunch. This is a rendering of the inside. Uh, there's been some moving of inside partitions as we've dealt with uh, the VA on their needs. But we do have that kind of pop-up glass area to get a lot of natural light in the main waiting areas. and. Um, Really, it's, it's, it's facing, the main entrance is facing west. Just some quick elevations. And again, the, the one on the top here is the back of the, the, back of the building that faces Mall Circle Drive. So you can see there's a lot of glass there. And this is, this is just our actual subdivision plan. So we are that lot six that's on the right side of this plan that we'd be carving away from the existing, I believe it's called Parcel A of the mall. So that, that's very quick overview. Happy to answer any other questions, but we are can excited can to move forward. Move that back one uh, sure. picture. No, I'm, I'm seeing if this is in Macy's parking lot, and I'm seeing Best Buy here to the right. No, no, no you're no, on the wrong no, side. Wrong side of the building. Okay. Yeah, we're the. It's oh, a it's okay. a red line around that lot six, right. and that's the building. Firestone. Cover. Yes, right by next Firestone. year, good year, good year. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that yeah. too. Yeah. Okay, good, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, both of them. <laughs> Is there any, uh, I guess we would say that would be north of the site, uh, 
there's like a hill there going up to the upper Macy's parking lot. Is there any kind of earth moving being done there? No, no, we're keeping all of ours. If I go back to the aerial, the there's a berm, and then my, my yellow line on this is a little thick, but that existing drive that the bus goes down now along that berm to Macy's and comes out, that is outside of our parcel, and we are maintaining that road in its exact configuration. Okay, so, very good. So that access road that kind of goes at an angle on both sides, those will remain untouched. So really everything is fitting in that parking lot. Everything is, is fitting in that yellow line. So we're staying within Mall Circle Drive, and then part of our um, discussions with the malls, they have to maintain access and maintain their lease requirements for their anchor tenants, et cetera. How many, how many patients a day? Uh, they, they, they've estimated they'll have between um, 110 and about 140 staff a day, and then on their peak days they could have up to 350 patient visits. Mm -hmm. um, okay, wow, well, I think yeah. that many. Yeah, the, there's a good amount. But, I mean, one of the reasons they wanted to be here in their in their search is, you know, there's there's staff, there's patients, there's visitors. They want amenities. They want places to eat. Some of them stay overnight because um, they're coming for multiple days of, of testing. Uh, but majority of it is really just ease of access to major thoroughfares and amenities because the staff. Sean, you may not be able to answer this. Sure. Is it going to be just outpatient only? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. This is just an outpatient clinic. Okay, I just want mm -hmm. just for our information. Oh yeah, yeah. And then to, to, as a follow-up, you're saying outside of the roadway, outside of it. So in other words, the current existing bus drop-off, it's the lower entrance still still continuing to exist. Well, we're actually working with the Port Authority and the mall. Port Authority gave us a, a letter. One of the VA's requirements was, you know, their veteran bus population right. is, a, is a huge yeah. rider. So it's a win-win for, for the VA and for the Port Authority. So we're working with them to bring the, the bus stop directly to the clinic. And also, uh, the, the, the mall is already working. There's an existing park and ride within right. the clinic right. that right. we're relocating. Right They've already started that process to move that over to the Dick side for the short term oh. during our construction. So Port Authority has been involved with us in the mall, and we're working to either add a stop or just reconfigure it so the ridership will increase. Relocate that stop. Right. Yeah, yeah. Th we definitely will be getting a stop along the clinic because that will be utilized by the veteran I'm, population. I'm glad you brought that up because when I drove around the mall, I wondered at first why it wasn't going over in the Dick side, but then I realized it's for the bus route as well. It gives you that, that – the patrons the you know that are yeah. going to be coming in by the bus right there yeah so it's a perfect location as far as within the mall yes it is and actually if you can see the area oh that was there is a the, the dicks lease parcel actually yeah. owns most of that parking lot right. so the the best place for the mall with macy's uh was on that side of yeah. the, the clinic right there. Mm -hmm. any other questions Council, any other questions? No. no so the Planning Commission does recommend approval. Anything from staff's point of view? No, it, it's a good project. It's good for Monroeville. No issues. Very good. So uh, Council will consider this on Tuesday the 13th. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Okay, nice, Sean. Council, we're moving over to our motions. We have three this evening. Mr. Little. Yeah. Uh, Number one is uh, for Tuesday night is a motion to authorize the advertising ordinance to establish no parking in the Hazelwood Drive cul-de-sac. Uh, this was brought up last month. Council tabled it. We have uh, um, SEC attached petition. Did we get a petition? Yes, yeah, there's yes there is. Yeah, there is. Under under I didn't know we did. Yeah. Oh, okay, good. I didn't know that came in. I apologize. I didn't know it came right in. Right after the orange section. Attached. Dara must have snuck that in on me. Hmm? <laughs> All right, I didn't know that came in. Right after the orange section. Okay. All right, yeah. Okay, so for Tuesday night, then, council can consider that. Thank you. Okay, any questions on the petition or anything for Hazelwood Drive call us act No. I think we should approve it. Thank you. Yeah, just for the record, there, uh, there are six pages of signatures on the petition. Just for Wait a Make sure you're looking at the right petition. That's the Bruner Drive. Well, names. Am I the wrong one? You're yeah, it's the, one. Yeah, it's the uh, Hazelwood Drive. Okay. It's the right one. I'm on the orange section. There's the haze. Right, right after the, the orange section. Right yeah, there. right after the orange. Which is probably okay, so it's a, it's a one page, but it does satisfy the uh, for requirement 50, 50%. for. Exactly. Oh, this is the, this is the big one. Yeah. Any questions, Council? No. Nope. Nope. Like next, that lives there. next motion. Okay, next is a motion to authorize to advertise an ordinance to establish a stop sign on Cathedral Drive and Young Drive. Staff is uh, looking at this along with also over at Hawkeye Park, if I'm not mistaken, and they're talking to our traffic engineer, HRG, uh, and evaluating the uh, stop sign. Paul, you want to add anything to that? No, I just uh, there are similar situations with Young Drive and with um, Hawkeye Park. Both entering a, a, a park, both a short segment of road, both have the same characteristics of 
we're working with our traffic engineer to see if there's anything, any new inventions that would help with uh, with that problem without putting stop signs. Will the traffic engineer have his answer to you before Tuesday's meeting? No. Okay, so we should table it. Yes. Okay. Anything else, Council? Nope. Next item. Okay, uh, next item is a motion to authorize to advertise a request for proposal for a review and critique of the staff updated zoning ordinance. Uh, Paul Wilden has been working on this for quite a while, but uh, staff, uh, and I've talked to certain council members, and we think that it'd be better to have a, uh, a different set of eyes on it. Uh, somebody from outside the municipality look at it and give a, a critique, and we think we should go out for RFP on this. I'm good with it. Okay. No, I think it's an important project, and uh, mm -hmm. Paul's done a great job. And I agree. Yep. And yeah, I think the right thing to do is keep it moving forward. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions, Council? Nope. 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 Very good. Moving over to resolutions, we have two this evening. Okay, next two are somewhat housekeeping items. There's a resolution approving the disposition of records as set forth in the records manual. We do this every year, most, mostly financial records that can be disposed of and shredded, and we get a certificate of, uh, of uh, destruction of those <coughs> records that have been destroyed, and they are listed there under the uh, resolutions, the records that we are destroying. Any question on that, Council? No. Next item. Okay, next one is a resolution approving an agreement of the Monroeville Police Department permitting voluntary mutual police aid and assistance to the police departments and municipalities of the Turtle Creek Valley Council of Governments. Um, even though we give aid to um, adjacent municipalities, we're protected under Commonwealth law, it's always good for liability and insurance reasons to have everything spelled out. And this um, came from the Turtle Creek Valley Cog, and surprisingly, we have never, never uh, adopted it, and it should be adopted. I agree. Yep. Any questions? Oh, that we're good. Everybody good? Okay, very good. Council, moving over to our ordinances. We have five this evening. Mr. Ratcher, please. First one is an ordinance of the municipality of Monroeville amending ordinance number 848 regulating parking on Bohinski Way. Is there an explanation on that? Mr. This Lucas? was a request because of, um, you know, during the large scale tournaments slash events, Vehicles are parking along the roadways and prohibiting other vehicles to get in and out, as well as emergency vehicles. Basically, it's going to be posted no parking. Yes, it'll be posted no parking. The police will can't enforce it at that time. Um, it's a it's a large conflict with the farmers market actually also. When well, you have the farmers market along with the, um, the tournaments, uh, gets crowded. People don't want to necessarily park it in the parking lots. <laughs> and so they park along the roads and it creates a problem. We're going to put some signage in the overflow area. You know, as long as the weather is conducive, they could park in the field if they would like to. If not, they're going to have to walk down to the other parking lots. Yeah, because typically on those days, like on the end where the amphitheater is and the soccer fields, there typically isn't very much going That's on correct. there. So, so there's definitely a lot of parking. It's a side. far walk for some people, mm -hmm. but uh, mm -hmm. it does get a little crowded. It's, an, it's a safety issue yes. blocking the road there. Next, next, item. next is another one, uh, an ordinance of the municipality of Monroeville amending ordinance number 848 regulating parking on Cannon Gate Drive. I believe this is in the Glenwood neighborhood. Yeah, this is another one. Uh, we were doing some housekeeping when we were looking at the road resurfacing, uh, looking at signage as part of that. And there are signs that are, are erected on Cannon Gate that have no supporting ordinance. So that's the reason for the ordinance to support the signage. So they're technically not enforceable. That's correct. Surprise, we, should probably, we should probably clean that up. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> Next, Next item. <laughs> Next is an ordinance of the municipality of Monroeville authorizing the proper officials of Monroeville to enter into a collective bargaining agreement with the Public Works Bargaining Unit for the period of January 2020 through December 2023. And this was the subject of our discussion in executive session. And we can consider that on Tuesday. Correct. Okay. Next item. Next is uh, a companion ordinance, an ordinance of the municipality of Monroeville authorizing the proper officials of the Mon Monroeville to enter into a collective bargaining agreement with the Refuse Collection Division of the Department of Public Works for the period of January 2020 through December 2023. 
Same thing. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Next item. Next and last, uh, an ordinance of the municipality of Monroeville amending ordinance number 2630, the benefits of Monroeville exempt and non-exempt employees, whereby retiring employees can reimburse the municipality for their immediate family's health care. Mr. Uh, Little, do you want to? Yeah, um, I have uh, gave uh, council a synopsis of this. Um, and we have to button up uh, some things with uh, Municipal Benefit Services, our broker for uh, health care. This has to do with more with retirees. So we'll keep you apprised of that. But um, I would recommend this be tabled at the, uh, um, at the uh, Tuesday council meeting. <coughs> mm -hmm. OK. Any questions, council? Very good. Mr. Rasher, do you have anything else this evening? Uh, there, not, not this evening. I have an item under my report, which I had planned on giving on Tuesday. So Very good. Save it for that. We can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm going to give you some suspense. <laughs> Nothing else. Though. Very good. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Little, you have some items. Yeah, I have a couple items. Uh, we do have another petition, a traffic calming uh, petition, which is, which is in your packet for Bruner Drive. If... Uh, um, any council member has any comments on that? Mr. Harvey, you're the, I think that's your ward, if I'm not mistaken. It is. <clears throat> and that is the one that is six pages that I yeah. mentioned earlier. <laughs> yeah. Yes, um, if you look at the top of your petition, Tom and Darla Lennox were kind of like the, the sponsors of this. Throughout my last seven and a half years of council, I have to tell you that there's been <clears throat> probably uh, a dozen or so complaints over the period of time for either speeding or oversized trucks using the road uh, because of the way the Pennsylvania law is written and, and <coughs> we can't restrict roads to just because uh, somebody wants it restricted they have to m meet qualifications we can't just shut the road off and make it private and the way to take care of the problems that have been in the past is of course speed enforcement stop sign enforcement we couldn't put uh, or we did put oversized trucks five tons except for local delivery uh, I think that cut back on some of them but they still say there's tractor trailers that got through there and I suspect that the tractor trailers are coming off Route 22 and following their GPS up Beatty Road to go to Plum and the GPS is telling them to make a right turn and they're they're going up Bruner Drive and down Ruth and we've even had one because of the way Ruth Drive uh, crests onto Center Road Just hung up. Uh, he hit the pole and drug the power lines down that being said uh, then of course there's the speeders and the reckless drivers that cut through from Center Road to Beatty Road so the residents are asking for some help here. Just now? Now, I, I, I do have to tell you that on, if you're coming from Center Road, that's Ruth, and then it turns into Bruner. There are two stop signs in the, on the whole stretch, one at, at uh, Blackberry and then one at Helmar. Right. Uh, but I myself have heard the race cars going up there. And being that this many residents Counting, if you look at the petition, the residents on the side streets uh, are in favor of this. What I would ask council <coughs> is to give Mr. Hugus permission to have the, uh, en the traffic engineers look at this. Nothing says that it's going to meet the criteria, but uh, I would. It, this is the beginning of the traffic calming ordinance, and I would ask council to give. Mr. Hugo's permission to proceed with uh, the next step. Go for it. Mm -hmm. And what is that next step, Mr. Hugo? Uh, this is step one. There's several steps to the traffic calling policy. The the initial app or initial petition is obviously the first step. The next step is to do an, do an analysis of the road as far and, and it takes into into consideration stop signs, grades, uh, volume of traffic, sight distances. You know, once you get through that analysis, then you start to design the actual traffic calming. I mean, we, we all think of the first thing is speed humps, bumps. I mean, but there's other things that you could do also. Be creative. Um, but all those got to be designed in a fashion uh, 
uh, that meets the standards. So the, the second step of this is doing them to analyze the road itself. Paul, once you collect that data and you move on to the ideas of what might take care, if there's proven a problem, right? Um, would we be able to have a, uh, a public meeting? It's on required under the under the okay. uh, the policy. There's a requirement of that. Okay, so they yes. can come up and so see. So we have to go through the whole the, the analysis and design stage. Right. And then we'll probably have options. And that's what we have with Logan's for. He had several options to take right. care of. Um, I explained that to him, by the way. I, yes. I told well, him And that. a lot of it has to do, you have to do traffic counts to see what the speed, the actual speeds that are being traveled on the road. Um, so there are several steps to it. I did tell him that all that which you said was involved, it wasn't just a... a a light switch that's thrown right it's it's and a little bit of a process so they understood and uh, waiting to hear from us well it sounds like uh, council's okay with moving yep. forward mm -hmm. mr. Hugus and just taking the next steps and um, okay with yes there's several steps but just get it moving here You're okay with the communication very good yeah mr. Harvey do you have anything else you want to say about that or are you good no that's that's all excellent uh, mr. little yeah, just as an FYI, I put this on the uh, agenda so council understands that Tricog Land Bank proposed property disposition, three of them, one of 1462 Madden Drive, 2712 Fifth Street, and speaking of Br Bruner Drive, 422 Bruner Drive, the uh, letter from uh, the uh, land bank, uh, Tricog, is uh, in your packets. So that gets into the records that council has been notified. That's about. good. Yes, very good. Very good. Very good. Very, very good. Okay, also in item, item number three is a recycling event, which I announced last month, too. We'll be at the Public Works on Saturday, July 17th, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. It's on our website. And I would recommend that uh, those that want to attend register through our website. Um, number four is National Night Out. Uh, Mr. At the Mr. Community. Little, that recycling program, is that a shredding program, too? Mm, no, I don't believe because they there's a shredding right program. The it's same picking thing? up electronics and TVs and yeah, batteries like and that. junk. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff that's not normally picked up from refuge. That's good. Okay. Okay. Uh, National night out at the community park uh, West Pavilions, uh, number two and number four on Tuesday, August third, twenty twenty one, from six to eight p.m. This is uh, our police department will be. Uh, uh, there and there'll be other booths from other um, um, fundraising uh, for fundraising events. Uh, I think the school district has several booths there, and uh, it's a pretty it's pretty interesting because the police they bring out all their equipment that they use, and I even think yeah. the fire uh, the, the fire EMS they, fire EMS, yeah. they have their all their equipment up there too. So I I think it's a, a very interesting event. Last, it's not on my, uh, is a Peace Pool dedication by the Rotary is July 31st at 10 o'clock. That's a Saturday, and uh, County Executive Rich Fitzgerald will be there as a keynote speaker. And on Tuesday at the council meeting, Jerry Maynard, who's the new president of Rotary, and Sam Sharma will be here uh, to uh, formally invite council and uh, request the use of the park. Um, so they'll be here Tuesday night. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Little. Mr. Hugus, anything this evening? No, sir. Ms. Rock? Uh, nothing. Very good. And uh, Mr. Robinson, Jared Robinson, our uh, TV15 producer. Um, did you, was this for this evening or was this yes. for? Yes. No, this is for tonight. Very good. Uh, yeah, it's for tonight. Is uh, Jared joining us uh, in person? I would think so. So. Yep, on the way. Oh, Very good. Okay. He's, he's, he's on his way. Yeah. The man behind the curtain. Don't yes. touch the. Don't touch the curtain. <laughs> well, as uh, you know, as Jared would want me to, you know, fill some airtime here while he's uh, while he's on his way up. There is an event that's coming up. A uh, there's a public comment is being sought for the proposed Turtle Creek connector for the uh, linking of the Westmoreland Heritage Trail and to the Great Allegheny Passage. Uh, the Westmoreland Heritage Trail has been a huge success here in Monroeville. It uh, comes from, uh, it comes from export through Murraysville, through Monroeville. Uh, there's, we have a parking lot at Saunders Station Road, and then it continues, and it currently ends at the BY Park in Trafford. Uh, what has been on the radar for a long time, and uh, through the county as well, is to extend that 
nine miles through the Mon Valley, going through Trafford, coming back through Monroeville, Pitcairn, Wilmerding, Turtle Creek, East Pittsburgh, North Braddock, and Rankin, and then connecting up with the Great Allegheny Passage. The Great Allegheny Passage is the trail that goes from Pittsburgh to Washington, D.C. It's 150 miles. So this would be uh, you know, huge for the region, huge for the Mon Valley. Um, from a Monroeville standpoint, the Westmore Heritage Trail has been a huge success. I'm a, a tremendous advocate for it. Um, this would be a wonderful thing. But what the county is doing is they're seeking public comment. They have two events coming up, uh, July 20th from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. at the Pitcairn Park Building uh, at 549 Broadway. And then they're having a second one, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. in Jul uh, July 24th at the Braddock Civic Plaza. This is just to get public comment, but the county is very uh, uh, ambitious to move along with this, and certainly uh, Monroeville is, and all these communities, so we're really looking forward to having, seeing this through, but those two public events are coming up for public comment. And right on time, Mr. Robinson. All right, Welcome. all right. Uh, thank you for allowing me to speak today. It's always nice to come from, you know, outside of the hole and <laughs> <laughs> see well, you we all. Can put a, we, can, we can put a face with a, with a voice. Exactly, that, that right, voice, right. You know. It's always nice to have the opportunity to do so. Um, I come today to seek a, a name change for our department, to have our department, uh, the name of our department formally changed from TV 15, and the 15 moniker just always represented the channel where we're located on Comcast. And so as Mr. Little mentioned earlier, we have two major providers in this area, uh, Comcast and Verizon. So on Verizon, we're actually found on channel 45. Uh, so I was seeking to have our name formally changed from TV 15 uh, to just an all-inclusive, more streamlined uh, Monroeville Municipal Television. I think it's just simpler. Uh, like I said, it's all inclusive, uh, and you know, it's not just related to the Comcast portion mm -hmm. of people who might want to watch us. Um, so that's that's what I'm seeking. And in terms of um, how we adopt it, I just what I'm coining a soft adoption. Because, uh, you know, we have some shirts and mm -hmm. my crew members have some shirts, so we don't plan on rolling out, you know, three dozen shirts right away and uh, anything <laughs> no, like that. we want four dozen. Yeah, four right. dozen? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> no, they may not don't. buy you any more shirts, just so you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> Maybe some tape to cover some, it up. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I mean, we'll probably still wear these for the time being. Uh, we have, you know, some wearing apparel. There's some signage. Uh, so a soft adoption is just kind of, you know, gradually – uh, websites, so on and so forth. Um, our, we have a, a YouTube and Facebook presence, so just kind of slowly but surely roll out a, the new name on some of the things that we are can easily do so. So you're going to call it Monroeville Municipal Television? Correct. <laughs> and then there'll be, a, I'm sure there'll be a couple of uh, nicknames. We'll probably go uh, MMTV will probably come up. Uh, That's what I was thinking. Some people will just call yeah. us Monroeville TV. Yeah, you want Park, it's Bethel Park TV. Right. Is there a reason there are some that you want to have the municipal? Um, I'm just wondering. I well, can't say specifically. I just think it sounds a little cleaner. Moroville TV, is, it's not, you know, I don't think there's well, anything Jared, wrong too, with that. Don't, don't you think, too, as, as technology is moving forward, too, it'll give you, if you have that to be able to shorten to MMTV or MM whatever, if you expand into the streaming vein or, you, you know, other online platforms. Right. To, to send which we to, do plan to do. Which we plan to do, right. right. So that, that way it'll, it'll look together. I think it's a great idea to change it, start I now, and keep, keep rolling it forward. Yeah. And, uh, and, and do. you guys have been doing a great job. Better. Yeah, you Thank guys have been doing a great job, and you yeah, can, yeah. Can, can, you know, adjust it up and down. Hopefully as your audience expands, that's right. the idea, too. That's, that's certainly the too, idea. So. You guys have been doing great. So well, I'm in favor much. of it, but I think Tim should budget their money and get the get them new t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> and I agree. I, yeah, yeah. Have it. I, just, <laughs> I just wasn't expecting you know have boxes of shirts here. No, you're going to change it. Right upon change, adoption. Yeah, change. Go ahead and get it done. Okay. Great. See, see, Jared, I told you. I, <laughs> yeah. I appreciate I you coming. That I, did, I didn't think that. I didn't think council would have a problem. I think no. it's a good idea. Uh, Jared brought this to my attention a couple months ago, and uh, because we've had um, 
We've had pr some pretty full uh, council meetings. I, I, I waited off, so I waited till we had a lesser agenda for him to present. I would imagine council. you have some business cards to change, too. I actually have not gotten business cards oh, yet. Damn. Wow. That's why we're Little, waiting. Please. Trying to save some money. <laughs> I, don't I just I didn't <laughs> seek business cards. I don't think it's on any administrative end as to why I don't. I we'll get you business cards. Don't worry about that. That's, that's not a problem. With the new change. MMTV, I, I kind of like yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and think about it, Tim, too. Is it, you know, people expand those formal names, and they, they get streamlined move forward because, you know what, people will be able to watch it here. <laughs> Right. Take it with them. Right. The applications are available, for. whether it's right. Apple or approach. any other streaming services. I, I, I you know, I, I when, when Jared was hired, I, I, I said we want, not that it's going to be must see TV, but, you know, you want people to say, um, make it kind of like uh, gitchy to use a word that hey, did you did you watch uh, Monroeville TV you last mean like night? Like MTV. Had, you know, we should just be to, MTV now. Yeah. You know, just to have, um, Jared. And, and Jared has put some different There's things on there, there that are free. Oh, yeah. You know, and you and, and can watch it. I, I'll go on there occasionally and, and, and look at some different things. And I happened to catch the uh, ribbon cutting done at AVETS, which he had his little camera going around. What's that camera called again? Osmo. Uh, Osmo. That was cool. Yeah, I, 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 I watched that. that was, I thought that, that was really good. I watched that video. Yeah. I've been yeah. sharing a lot of things that you put up. I, I, I've I, noticed. Have you? We yeah. appreciate that. Yeah, yeah you're putting a lot of good you're content. You're doing a lot of good stuff. We right. agree. Are very, very good. good and are we sharing that to the municipal Facebook pages? Because I know you have your own separate. I think maybe we just make sure we coordinate that with our municipal one. I know you have your own Facebook page that the department does. Uh, we just want to make sure the stuff you're putting out there is getting shared on the main page too because right, uh, you're doing some great content we will make sure as many people see it as possible yeah. absolutely well, that's that's great. i'm sure i miss a yeah. few you know but i try right i try to share i always notice <laughs> all the notifications come through i always Good. notice so well, you're, you're, we you're certainly doing a appreciate fantastic that job and i appreciate it you know so thank i you. want other yeah, people to you. see it as well yeah. you know, I, I i think that anything portrays uh municipal monroeville uh, I think it ought to be the whole name instead of a uh, few letters so people know it's Monroeville right, Municipal TV, that our name is advertised in the mm -hmm. community and everyone watches it instead of having a nickname or Monroeville TV or whatever. And I, I think uh, I like the idea of having munis Monroeville Municipal TV. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Very nice. All right, we'll get yep. those shirts rolling up. <laughs> okay. And his business Sounds cards. Good. And cards. <laughs> you got, there's Pencil four people hats. in this room. Hey, if you're going to go all the way, why not get hats, too? <laughs> <laughs> I always like to wear you know, a good list. Let's go get hats, <laughs> too. <laughs> you, know, you, got your, you got the council's ball. Right? Great. That's right. Jared, keep yeah, up the good work. Good go with it, Jerry. Go with it. Thank you. Thank you. You appreciate should do, it. You should yeah. do like what they do at the football game. Not show the TV. The camera guys should show each other. Oh, right, yeah, right. In there too, so yep. they know, because there's more guys that are doing good work. Thanks, guys. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you. Okay, Jared, thank you back much. down Thanks, to your Jared. All right. <laughs> All right, Council, we're going to move over to our reports of our Council members. Mrs. Gatos, anything this evening? I have nothing this evening. It's going to be a short one. <laughs> Mr. Poach. Uh, just a couple of personal uh, notes to, to catch up on, you know, because everything's been happening. We haven't time for it to just I. Missed some some family things. My son's third anniversary uh, that, that passed too. That was very successful. And uh, also a thanks to the building and engineering department, uh, to Mr. Weldon and Mr. Hughes. A few years ago, you guys started my daughter on a path. She just passed her engineering training exam this past week. We expected take, nothing less. Yeah, well, you, should, you go ahead and take a little credit too from that too. But actually, <laughs> it, it, she did really well uh, to do that too. So it was a good start for somebody that had a summer job. And uh, keep moving forward too. So, but thanks to everybody. All right, that's it, sir. Great, thank you, Mr. Harvey. Um, first of all, I would just want to welcome everybody back to the normal meeting. Boy, it feels good. Um, secondly, just for everybody's information, Mr. Hugus can interject here anytime he wants. I uh, wanted to tell the residents that the work being done on Old William Penn at the tunnel by Scott Drive is not us. It is the Turnpike Commission. Correct. That's a, that's a Turnpike project. Yeah. So. Expect expect lane restrictions. Yeah. When you hit the traffic jam there, because they got it down to one lane, it is not Monroe performing that work. It is the Turnpike. And um, as we come out of this pandemic, I'm sure most of you have noticed that uh, on the Parkway and the Turnpike, and the, there was no 
literally no uh, speed enforcement because they were restricting the police officers from coming in contact unnecessarily with people unless it was a very flagrant violation. I don't know what council thinks. I can tell you that it's my opinion that the chief and the manager ought to get together and put a schedule for some traffic enforcement details around Monroeville uh, because it's getting out of control. Absolutely. And uh, uh, so I wish Doug was here, but he's not. He's out of town right now. But I, I just believe from the phone calls and the conversations I've had that uh, the, the police department ought to schedule some uh, traffic enforcement details, whether they're stop signs or speeding in different neighborhoods around Monroeville to get everybody back down to ground zero. Mm -hmm. no, I'm glad you brought that up, Mr. Harvey. I've been recently getting a lot of complaints about that as well. Yeah. So uh, I mean, we'll never time. catch everybody, but uh, right now there, there's no enforcement out there whatsoever. There's nothing. So I was coming home from a location with my uh, wife and I saw a state police trooper with radar running on the turnpike. That was the first one I've seen in, a year. in nine months. You know. Boy, when you can hear those cars flying on that park. So, and last but not least, I don't know if any of you know, but Mrs. Gatos' first husband passed away. And I mention it because her children are having a hard time with it. So my condolences to her children, and that's it. Thank you, Mr. Harvey. Mr. Wolfram. Well, I'm just gonna really glad to be back here. I've been on vacation for a while, and half my family has had birthdays, including my father. I, I'm so glad to see him hit the big nine zero. All right. I bowl with him every Tuesday. Um, it's just so good to yeah. see a man uh, that I, I think he's going to hit 100 real easily. Uh, again, like I said, most of my family's had birthday, including myself. I'm not going to say how old I am because I'm not as old as I am. How about that? Sure. Other than well, that, younger I, than 90. I'm younger than 90, and I can tell you by how many, but like I said, it's just good to be back. Like I said, I was seeing the rest of my family down south and everything like that, but it's good to be back in this section session again. So that's it. That's all I have. Thanks, Steve. Mr. Arsico. A couple of things. I just uh, want to thank Mr. Harvey for bringing up uh, the enforcement or lack of it because of the pandemic. Thank you for that, Ron. Also want to wish Tom Wilson to get better and yes, get absolutely. back on his uh, feet. Geez, geez. Uh, Tom, we're all with you. I assure you that. And lastly, um, hopefully everybody enjoyed the 4th of July a holiday weekend. Oh, the fireworks. Uh, please remember, uh, freedom's not free, so I'd like to thank all our veterans as well as our current military personnel. And I'm going to add also our police, fire, and EMS personnel as well. Thank you for what they do. They keep us safe at night. And when you need an ambulance, they're right there. So, And if there's a fire... Obviously, we have all volunteer fire companies here in Monroeville. Thank you all for what you're doing, and uh, hopefully the rest of the summer is wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You're welcome. Mr. Williams. As I sat down the mall uh, watching the fireworks, and by the way, the fireworks uh, committee did a great job. Uh, they, they were really wonderful. Uh, but the problem was there was people there holding Roman candles, and shooting off mortars, and, and it was scary. They were just 20 feet away from me. Uh, next year, we're going to have to have more uh, police enforcement there to stop that. Uh, people don't respect themselves, so why would they respect you? But it was scary, and I didn't want to confront anybody. The last thing I need to do is be, get beat up or <laughs> over fireworks. Uh, but just, just on the news recently, there's a 23-year-old hockey player yeah. mm -hmm. got hit in the chest would have mortared fireworks and blunt trauma killed him. So these fireworks are nothing to play with. And uh, next year, uh, we're gonna have more enforcement at the mall and uh, make it safe. Or if we don't do that, then I won't be there anymore. That's all I have, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Williams. And yeah, to stay in the same vein with the fireworks uh, you know, committee, uh, big thanks to them. It takes a lot of people to put these things on. A big special thanks to Mr. Jim Johns, our formal councilman, he is the uh, chairman of that committee. Uh, thank you to the Visit Monroeville, Sean Logan. Uh, they donated money towards it, and certainly we had a lot of uh, police presence and fire presence and a lot of people there to make sure it was a smoothly run event and it was a great event, and uh, we're looking forward to next year's and hopefully maybe get the parade back next year. Uh, our, uh, one we mentioned earlier about the recycling event, uh, there actually is 
on July 17th a shredding event, Mr. Williams. Uh, Representative Markozik, Brandon Markozik's office, oh, okay. he is having a shredding event at his office in his office parking lot that's Saturday, July 17th, 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. You just come and pull up and they'll They'll empty the boxes out of your trunk. That's in his, his parking lot. He's across on Northern Pike, across from the Gateway Grill in that uh, Commerce Building. And I did mention the uh, the trail comment that they are seeking trail comment. Once again, that event is at the Pitcairn Park Building, Tuesday, July twentieth, five to seven p.m. And with that, I'll seek a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed. Thank you and good night. <laughs>